Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I want to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of January 12th, 2017. Um, before diving into the poll hearing, I'm going to turn over to Karen McGonigal for an announcement. Um, at this point in time, I would like to introduce Sean Lydon. Uh, Sean has been uh, appointed as the new Deputy Commissioner, and he will be taking the place of Gary Moshe. So um, from this point on, he will be uh, attending the hearings for our inspectional services. Thank you, Harry. Welcome, Thank Sean. You. Uh, the first item is a poll hearing on a petition by Eversource Energy to relocate one guy poll on Well Hill Street, Hyde Park, located on its southwesterly side, southeast of Hyde Park Avenue. Good morning. I am Sheila Gillis. I'm here on behalf of Eversource Energy. We request a grant of location to install one pole, uh, 1381 over one on Weld Hill Street. Uh, we currently have a steel guy pole out there that's being removed due to um, a new driveway going in. Any questions or comments? No, nope, but the, the issue that was pertaining to the uh, last request uh, has been resolved, so we're good to move forward with this. Any other questions or comments? This is a result of a new construction project, is it, down there? Uh, yes, it's um, at 3842 Hyde Park Ave. Hyde is going to be the same. Yeah, it's Guy Pool. Guy Pool, Amy or Todd? No, we're good. No? Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Eversource Energy to relocate one Guy Pool on Weld Hill Street in Hyde Park, located on the southwesterly side, southeast. Hyde Park Avenue. Second. All David. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Moving on to new business, item number one. Uh, Dartmouth Street, Boston Proper, specific Aye. repairs on a petition by Rosie's Place. I'm the executive director of Rosie's Place, and I'm here on behalf of our petition to install a memorial for our founder, Kip Tiernan. Um, throughout her life, Kip Tiernan was at the center of the fight for social and economic justice for nearly five decades. Kip advocated, protested, and lobbied for affordable and accessible housing, health care and education, as well as jobs, civil rights, and peace. Drawing from her early roots in the Catholic left movement, Kip personified the philosophy that together we can change the world if we are only willing to care enough and take the risk of being human. In addition to founding Rosie's Place, Kip began other important organizations that, solve, that serve vulnerable people, the Boston Food Bank, Healthcare for the Homeless, Community Works, Poor People's United Fund, probably a million people over her lifetime, which is amazing. But what I loved most about Kip was what she said about justice, compassion, and truth, and that's why we love this sculpture. It, too, allows Boston to remember and reflect on Kip's words that are more important than ever. One of Kip's favorite phrases was, cui bono, who benefits? And the last three months have reminded me how important this question is. With your help and support, we can ensure that Boston honors one of its most dear daughters and ensure that her words and acts live on. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ryan Murphy. I'm one of the designers for the memorial. I just want to give a brief just overview of kind of the physical memorial itself. Um, it's comprised of three arches. You can see the model and the images behind me. The arches themselves are made of a series of parallel steel ribs. Um, the arch became kind of a motif for us because of the immediate context of the um, Old South Church, BPL, Trinity Church, they all have archways, and on those archways are inscribed text. The text gives meaning to the threshold of entry for these different places. So what became important over the process of design were Kip's words um, themselves. So these archways become the carriers for Kip's words, which become a call to action to the public. Um, secondary to the actual meaning was the archway 
was a perfect for the site, which is a thoroughfare on uh, Dartmouth Street. So the way it's situated, you can see the oblique here. If I just it over. Um, as you travel along Dartmouth Street, it causes very little interference in the, in the passageway along that street, but becomes something that people enter through and are surprised when you arrive, and uh, then you encounter two Kip squares. It kind of works on multiple scales, kind of the far away to the up close and the personal and the text. I'm Hildy Karpwich. I'm from Stantec. Uh, we did the specific repair plans and we, uh, we handled all the correspondence with the utility companies and with all the city departments. Um, we have been working on the foundation plans. Initially when we sent out the plans they were in a preliminary state but we have narrowed it down now now that we have the design down a bit. Um, the city of Boston has agreed to repair the sidewalk uh, so the city itself is going to work on the brickwork and so the cover over the foundation for the memorial is approximately six inches, and then the foundation itself will be 10 inches deep. There are a couple, um, as you can see on the specific repair plans, there are a couple utilities that will be going beneath the foundation. Uh, most of them should be deeper than um, the, the inches, you know, uh, the 14 inches, but if um, the, telephone, the telephone one is the one that might be shallow enough uh, you know, water and gas sh should certainly be below that. Um, and in that case, what our plan is, is to install a bond breaker on the conduit, um, any utility lines, so that way if they need to repair, replace, uh, anything of that sort, it won't be an issue to get underneath the foundation and do the repair work and repair, repair the foundation itself in the future. Uh, there were a couple questions from the city. Um, a few different departments actually mentioned, had some questions about clearance. The columns themselves are spaced six feet on center, and the columns are about four inches wide, so that does meet the minimum five feet of clearance. Uh, also, if you look at the specific repair plans, it has greater than five feet to all the other obstructions in the sidewalks, such as tree wells, um, bike racks, uh, anything else that's on the sidewalk, and certainly to the building as well. So. Every location, there will not be any issues um, with uh, disability uh, packs there. Also, it does have more than um, 80 inches of vertical clearance. The total sculpture height, I believe, um, it's still 14 feet? Yes. Okay. Um, so it'll have more than enough vertical clearance as well. Uh, another one of the issues was looking at the lighting. So at this time, we, we have been talking with the departments and we, we looked at a few different options. Um, one of them was ground lighting, which could cause some problems with visibility, with accessibility and whatnot, so that's out. Um, lighting it from above is out. We're not going to do, no matter what the lighting plan is in the end, we are not going to do any utility work within the right of way at all. Um, and we are not lighting the sculpture from above or below. Uh, so we are, we, we have been exploring some options to see if anybody's willing to um, light from one of the adjacent buildings and that's something we're going to speak to the city about certainly. Uh, I believe Lighting Department, DPW, is that who we should be talking to on that one? Okay. But otherwise we just don't have a lighting plan at this time. And then um, we got uh, no exceptions from everybody except for the Boston Transportation Department. Um, Mr. Hasberg requested that we do a pedestrian level service analysis, which uh, I think was emailed to you over on the 9th, I believe it was the 9th. Um, so the level of service, level of service analysis uh, determined that it's still an optimal level of service. Um, yes, we, re we received the uh, LOS uh, uh, analysis from Howard Side Hudson and it is an acceptable level and we're pleased to, to see that, so. Great. And I think that was all from the utility and town departments. Questions or comments? I, I think you already touched on it, with, um, the handicap accessibility. I think it's hard to tell from the rendering from here. Uh, but should I assume that the concrete slab and the uh, column base plates will be flush with the sidewalk? Yes. Okay. Other questions or comments? Ms. Marsh. Traffic when will the construction take place? Do you have a timeline assuming that uh, the PIC process will go as uh, intended? The 
artists are uh, wrapping up their negotiations with fabricators, which we hope will happen soon. And once that finishes, we hope a uh, late spring, early summer. And the complimentary work around that the city would uh, potentially do around the sidewalk, when would that be, when would be the ideal phasing for that? We, they would time it with the installation of the sidewalk. That area is on the docket to be repaired anyway. So we are working with uh, public works to, to coordinate that effort. Any comments or questions? Comments or questions from uh, anyone in the audience? Please. Any other comments? Will two weeks be enough time to come back for uh, a public hearing? The 26th? Three weeks. Three weeks, I'm Three sorry. Weeks. Three weeks, thank you. Three weeks? Thank you. Terrific. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we have to stutter so that we're not on holidays. And we have two per month. The second item of uh, new business, 5468 Devonshire Street, Quaker Lane, Boston Proper, specific repairs, earth retention license on a set of petitions by MHF, Devonshire V, LLC. with Niche Engineering, and to my right is Susan Sheldon with GDS, the, uh, the OPM for the uh, 54 to 68 Devonshire project. And next to her is Jennifer Schultz, um, legal counsel from Goodwin Property. Um, as you may recall, uh, I was here about a year, a year or so ago on behalf of the related deal for the uh, permitting of improvements to the Quaker, I'm uh, sorry, Congress Square development, which is bounded by Water Street, Congress Street, Quaker Lane, that master development area consisted of six buildings, or six parcels. Um, related deal has since sold one building and one parcel to my client, who is MHF Devonshire. They're in the process of renovating the existing 12-story building and constructing a 12-story addition next to it. That will serve as a 163-room hotel. This is Devonshire Street here. This is the existing 68 Devonshire. This is a proposed addition. Devonshire Street, Quaker Lane here. Uh, we are here today to ask for uh, permission to move forward to a public hearing for two applications. I will start with the temporary earth support. Uh, Devonshire Street is right here. This great area, this great area here is the extent of the existing area way. Presently, the building's foundation extends out to the curb line. This dark gray is the granite foundation wall. Uh, in conversations and negotiations with Eversource, the intent is to install two transformer vaults within the area way under the sidewalk. There'll be some minor, uh, we'll have to remove a portion of that existing foundation wall in order to fit the vaults, but the, the projections or the uh, protrusions into Devonshire Street are no greater than they are now. All the work falls within the existing perimeter of the foundation. Uh, so we do have uh, two vaults proposed there. And in doing so, to do that work, we have asked for a temporary support system along Devonshire Street. In this area here, uh, sold to pile on lagging. And then for the new building addition here, we're, uh, we're asking to seek approval for a temporary support, sold to pile on lagging on Devonshire Street along Quaker Lane. Um, Quaker Lane does fall within the uh, 
what it's looking for that term. Excuse me. It does fall within the Boston Historic uh, Boston Landmarks Commission's jurisdiction. So we filed an application with them right before the holidays, and we have a public hearing with them on January 24th to confirm or to discuss with them what impacts a temporary earth support system may have within the Quaker land layout. Our intent is to remove the granite pavers and store them, to install our temporary earth support system, and then when that system comes offline, it will be cut to eight feet below grade, and that comes offline. Uh, we will provide a temporary sidewalk there until Related Beal comes in and does their improvements because Related Beal, the master developer, is responsible for the reconstruction of Quaker Lane. And from what I understand, that design is still ongoing. Uh, we also, we have a Ju uh, January 24th public hearing with Landmarks to confirm that our temporary support system meets their satisfaction. And then our public hearing, our hope is for February 2nd, and that will be wrapped up by that point. The Getting back to the specific repairs along Devonshire Street, along the building face, and along the post condition. Uh, because we're putting the wall in, this, in the area away that will be at grade, uh, through conversations with uh, Amy Cording, we were, it was under her direction she suggested that we go through a specific repair approval. Uh, this sidewalk now consists of granite, granite slab uh, sidewalk with some concrete. Um, we are proposing a forward concrete sidewalk here. Technically, it does not fall within the landmarks jurisdiction, but we um, the conversation with Jill Zick at the BD, uh, BPDA. Um, we have a meeting scheduled with Disabilities, Landmarks, the BRA, and our and PIC staff for next Friday to review how we can rebuild this sidewalk, meet, meet the goals and objectives of the Disabilities Commission, but also satisfy Landmarks concerns and not lose the historic integrity of the area. These are those bluestone blocks. So our hope is, when we, again, when we come back in the second, that box will also be checked and all parties will be satisfied. Um, the project is working under a uh, construction management plan for the master development, but we will have to come back and seek approval for the earth support and the sidewalk repairs. Um, and Susan is well aware of that. And there's also a tap for the, for the master development that related deal is responsible for. But the tap up for the master, but this is not part of the uh, master. Because you sold the property. Right. So that's, that's, that has to be separate and distinct from the master tap. It, the TAPA has been assigned in part to this ownership group as part of the purchase process. And so there is, I believe it was written as an amended TAP or an amendment to the TAPA. So we do have a portion of the TAPA that simply relates to this project. In fact, I, I do what Mr. Hesford or Commissioner Hesford stated in the original program. Was there an intent to put a hotel there? Yes. Because yes. I must yes. have missed that. So shame yes. on me. Because the concern that might be there is how loading, unloading takes place for a hotel on Devonshire that has, it may be a tiny street, but it has a lot of activity in terms of shuttle buses, MBTA buses. You got this, I shouldn't waste your time telling you what happens over there, but you need to be sensitive to what's happening over there and how that thing can be compounded or exasperated by your activities. Your project is exciting. Yeah but that excitement might lose some of its cachet if things fall apart. Sure, uh, and so a hotel has always been contemplated, including to the room count and key count that uh, we're currently proposing, the 163 rooms, I think, has actually gone down from what was originally proposed as part of the master development. And as part of the TAPA and the original planning, there has always been, I think, a 60-foot wide pickup drop-off zone that has been negotiated and is in the TAPA and the amendment to the TAPA On along Devonshire, Devonshire Road. In I'm not sure that that has been solidified, that's okay. been discussed, basically, but I'm not sure. And again, getting back to the TAPA, I will check with our Corporation Council uh, with Catherine uh, Lazat, but uh, obviously I, I want to see somebody from the owners group signature on that TAPA, you know. Uh, uh, yes, of course, and I believe that there is on the amendment to it, but we will look into yeah, that I and ensure that, that, so that there I'll, is. I'll, I'll check on Yeah, of course, no yeah. problem. So, if you could bring a copy of that next time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, as you can see, we have a couple T's to cross and I's to dot, um, but our hope is that we be back in three weeks and be good to go. I, I also I have a little bit of a concern about NSTAR or Eversource vaults. Why are they not a co-petitioner? It's their, it's going to be their facilities. Why are they not here? I've been working with um, Eversource, uh, the construction, George Hatsopoulos and construction, and this is going to be a private vault. 
as opposed to a public vault. Slow down. It's a private meaning you own the vault. Who is going to service the vault in? in that that is that is correct, sir. It's within our contiguous the, the, within the space of our current basement, and um, this is in the areaway which is con contiguous with the whole um, basement level. It's not within the right of way. It's in their areaway, and so what we're really permitting in here is the fact that what's on our sidewalk surface is going to change from today to tomorrow to be a vault cover. Uh, but there, the vault is not contained within our property, it's contained within yeah, theirs. Yeah, so they're but, repurposing their space yes. to have a vault. But the yes. areaway is not city? Correct. It's, it's part of their basement. So they're basically putting it in their basement, their basement just goes under our sidewalk. So it was a discontinuance at some time. It's some an areaway, time. yeah. But I, I mean, a lot of areaways are actually basically kind of like leased by the building owner? But so no, like this is their area way and they're responsible for the sidewalk above it today and they're responsible for the sidewalk above it tomorrow. All we're permitting here is that it'll be a vault cover instead of a cement concrete sidewalk. And why wouldn't we put this in the Quaker Lane instead of out on the, uh, the Quaker Lane? Heavily, is a, Quaker heavily Lane traveled. Is, Quaker Lane is a public way. Yep. Um, and it is filled with utilities presently. We have the recharge system, we have a sewer line, we have storm drains, we have Edison, we already have Telecom, we have some gas. It's a small area that's filled with utilities. There is no room in that portion of Quaker Lane. Just get me a plan of that backs that up because I'm not too keen on putting the vaults out on a heavily traveled pedestrian sidewalk. Simply because when maintenance has to be done, it's, a, it's basically the sidewalk's closed. It's an awkward location. Right. Again, nobody wasting your time trying to tell you. You should be more familiar with the location that we are in terms of how quickly the intersection of state congress can drive to a halt when a bus or a shuttle bus stops illegally where they shouldn't be. So I can just imagine in the future when one of your patrons come and try to gain access to your building, because it's a hotel, how quickly that whole area can come to us, how, how quickly it can become awkward. We understand that the vaults are located um, adjacent to the drop off the five valet, valet spots, but they're, they're, it's located also between our two entryways. We, we have two existing entryways of which we are maintaining, and this is sort of surgically placed between those two so that full access to the building can always be maintained. Again, I prefer to see these in Quaker Lane, not on Devonshire Street. Well, um, well, there is there is no room left in Quaker Lane. Um, yeah, I'll afford you the. Quaker please give me the details. Yeah, share that information, John, with us, so Certainly. we can check our. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't our first choice. We've explored many options. Understand, but recognizing the future. Not mine either. <laughs> Just trying to protect the interest of how Devonshire Street is going to get reprogrammed in the future, in alignment with how Washington Street, that that whole area, is being re envisioned. So we, the city needs to reserve its options as much as we are quite excited by your project. In the space between the vault opening and the curb line or the vault opening and uh, the building edge, how much space is that? At the There's, uh, we actually we met with um, disability staff a week and a half uh, last week and um, incorporated their comments into this design. And we're also going to circle back with them before the public hearing program. Make sure uh, everyone is satisfied. Okay. Um, to, just to Eddie's point, to Commissioner Hester's point, just want to make sure that there's not just sort of uh, preserving access to the building, but preserving access along the sidewalk. Um, so we've been working um, directly with um, Eversource, and it meets exactly all of their specifications for lid, um, same lim lid manufacturer, same um, vent. Um, the only thing we're uh, requesting is that we can access that, that directly from the street, like all of the public vaults. That's all. Other questions or comments? Um, with respect to the Earth Retention Center, it was one of the last things that Gary and I reviewed. We're okay with it. If, you know, obviously, with some coordination with the utilities that are there, yeah. but it is it yeah. their address. And with respect to specific repairs, if they get the approval of the commission, commission with person with disabilities, we'll be okay. Any okay. questions or comments from the audience? All right. Um, two, three weeks, three weeks will be enough time? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Before uh, entertaining a motion to adjourn, I just want to thank Harry McGonagall for all the time, expertise, attention that he has uh, uh, provided to the PIC as a, as a member of the commission. Well, I certainly didn't feel like I was 
up to Gary's power, but it, uh, it's been fun. Uh, I've enjoyed my, I thought I'd get one more out of it, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, um, obviously, welcome Sean Lydon, and uh, he'll, uh, I think he'll be a suitable replacement. Well, Harry, it's been great to have you. Uh, entertain the motion to adjourn. Don't move. All second. All there. All right. All right.